What up guys? It is Monday, March 20th, 2017, and as I am still out of work due to a health-related issue and bored to death, I thought I would get some videos done and put up, get my video count up and get my subscriber count up, which is pretty damn sad to say the least. I believe I have my mom, my fiance, and my cat on my subscriber list. I'm pretty sure the cat doesn't even watch the videos, so that's a pity sub right there. And it's pretty sad you're getting a pity sub from your cat. So uh, subscribers are welcome. Feedback is welcome. Uh, let me know if there's anything I do that you like, anything I do that you don't like, and we can argue about it because everything I do is 100% correct, just like everybody else. It's a great, great world we live in. Um, this video is going to be the first in a series that I'm simply going to call Knife Talk. And I'm literally, I'm going to talk about knives, uh, knife manufacturers in the industry, some custom makers that I'm familiar with and have been blessed to have worked with, um, some that I'd like to be familiar with. Uh, we'll talk about the knife enthusiast community, plenty to talk about there. Uh, we may cover some everyday carry uh, stuff and we may cover some firearm stuff although I don't uh, claim to be a expert on firearms just like everything you see in front of you I research the crap out of everything that I ever think about buying because I only have a certain amount of disposable income I can spend on this stuff especially since I'm out of work um, with uh, a vastly lowered income right now so uh, I have in front of you, knife-wise, three different price points of knives. I have uh, a, what most would consider a lower end. I have a mid-range piece at about $200. And then I have a custom piece uh, that was $550 in 2008 is when I had that built. Uh, in my eyes, every one of them is totally equal. That $500 custom is not better than that uh, $31 Columbia River right there. Uh, in fact, the Columbia River is a more advanced knife in some design aspects uh, than that custom-made Crawford is. And, uh, you know, not to bash on the Crawford, I consider the Crawford folder, uh, the fighter, to be one of the best, one of the best, fighter knife designs, defensive knife designs uh, that you will ever find. It is a hoss very well uh, built by Pat and Wes Crawford. Like I say, I had that built in 2008, and I love that knife. If I showed it to you close up, in fact, I will. Look at the handle, okay? This knife has been carried it's been carried a lot, and it's been sharpened, all right? Look at that. It is smooth as silk, smooth as silk. I can't believe I just opened that the first time left-handed. Uh, that's awesome. Anyway, um, this knife, to me, is equal to the knife above it. Uh, this is a Kaiser Sheepdog. Now, uh, this is from a Chinese company, Kaiser. Uh, it is, I consider, a mid-range knife. They're around $200, a lot of their models are. And they have some real gems in their lineup. And this one is one. The detent is perfect for the blade. Um, and it's a heavy blade, too. When it snaps open, it moves a lot like a... Uh, real strong spring automatic, a side opening automatic. It kicks your hand when that blade comes around and hits that stop pin. So there's a lot of mass there, so flipping action is fantastic. Closing it, that, yeah, there you go. It's like butter. And uh, I've tightened that up from where it was when it came in. That never had any blade play. I was just messing around with the pivot and seeing how it affected uh, the centering on it, which is perfect okay that's a you know that's a mid-range knife i consider that um and we'll when we talk about that knife we are going to get into the usa versus import argument 
and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about that, and it's probably not what you think it is. Uh, but after you hear me, you may change your mind about the way you think about it, too. Uh, let's talk about that firearm, okay? Uh, in the state of Tennessee, we can conceal carry with a permit, and I choose to, and I think everybody should. Uh, although I live in a very rural area of East Tennessee, I am outside of Knoxville. There's, you know, it's not a huge uh, population density that breeds a lot of random uh, violence. Uh, the tighter people get into an area, the angrier they get. Uh, you'll never be able to convince me any different of that. So, uh, you know, I, I choose to carry. I think everybody should. This is a Ruger LC9S Pro. I think it is the best of the Ruger LC9 models. Uh, this pistol right here did not need anything except a set of night sights on it. Um, I can't remember what brand that is. It's the brand that manufactures the bright sights. Uh, they're not hybrid. There's no fiber optic in them. They're a straight up set of night sights, uh, tritium night sights. Um, the tritium is very bright, very bright. They are twice as bright as my Trigicon HDs that are only three or four years old. Um, the only thing I did to the sides, I took a black Sharpie and I painted the white circles on the back side. Uh, I don't need three white circles on a set of night sides. That's just a personal thing. Um, all this pistol needs is a few extra magazines. And they're expensive like everybody else's, and you only get one. Uh, shame on you, Ruger. I know that's keeping the cost down, but people would rather pay $25 more for this pistol and get two magazines. I'm telling you that right now. Otherwise, uh, I love that little pistol. It replaced my Springfield XDS in 9mm, which I found to be clunky and heavy at that size and capacity now, i'm a medium frame guy i'm five foot nine five foot ten on a good day i weigh about 190 pounds uh, so i'm carrying too much body fat but i'm not chunky um, average build let's say and this pistol carries much better than the springfield xd did uh, iwb and owb so uh, I like it. Uh, you've got the standard capacity for the 9mm in that size. Um, it fits good in my hand. It feels good in my hand. And it points well. Uh, most importantly, it points well. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we'll cover it in a review later on. Now in the, in the middle there, you see some everyday carry stuff. And I'm going to stay right now. I'm not that into everyday carry in the sense that I go out and spend money on the cool stuff in everyday carry. Okay, you're not going to see a bunch of custom-made bottle openers pass through my collection. In fact, you're probably not going to see any more. Uh, as I've got bottle openers already, and I've already bought this one that you see in front of you, and that's a Klein Custom Knives Punisher Popper. You can find Klein Custom Knives on Facebook. And I love that thing. Um, Brandon Klein, the maker, had took that design and ran with it. Did it in some different finishes in the quarter inch uh, stainless that you see there. And then some slightly thinner titanium stock. Uh, like I say, multiple finishes on, on both versions. And he did them in two different sizes, of which this is the normal size, not the oversized. Uh, it's stout at a quarter of an inch. All I did was tie a little piece of cord on it, and I can throw it down in my pocket uh, to open a beer bottle, which if you go to a bar somewhere, they open it for you. So... In my opinion, that type of everyday carry is just a cool item. It's 99%, as nothing fancy would say it, a second kind of cool. And I'm paying more for first time, first type of cool myself. 
so you won't see a lot of those coming through my collection. The pin above it is a Boker bolt action in titanium. Uh, I did want a bolt action pin, and I wanted it in titanium. This has got the integral clip um, that they did well before Riate did theirs, but I see this one is not as well received. Now, it may not be as well done and look as good, uh, but they did it a year or two years before, or maybe more, before Riate did it with their pen. That uh, focus is going crazy on autofocus. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, what you see in front of you is a good example of what I'm going to be talking about on my channel. It's a cross-section of my collection at different price points. Um, a little bit about philosophy of what I look for in a pistol, and what I look for in my knives, and what I look for in my collection. And that is bang for the buck. I want the best I can at any given price point. And I'm going to show you guys some of that in my review videos. So, uh, like I say, subscribers are welcome. In fact, I'll beg for them if you want me to. Just pretend I'm on my knees and I've got big titties and I'm looking at you with that look. Okay? And come on in and subscribe. Uh, and, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, just let me know how I'm doing, guys. All right, peace out.